All right, S&P, nothing. There, there's really not much to break down today. We dropped down, we hit a zone, we pushed up, and, and that's across the board. Uh, we Technically, we gapped down. We're right back at the expected move, which one of two things is probably about to happen. Some real fireworks, or, or they're done. Yeah, you know what? Up or down. You know, like the usual stuff. Let's just go over some scenarios real quick of what I'm thinking out loud. Two standard deviations. Fireworks are done. Maybe we make a mad dash to the south side, which is kind of what I'm hoping for. But we'd have to really make a mad dash to even consider this this lower end. Right now, anybody buying any like 506 spy puts for you know this Friday uh, is probably in the same chat with Vinay. You know they're going to lose 99.99% of the time, and then that one time it'll be worth it because these are probably pennies, and they'll go to dollars. Uh, but so just pulling back even. Fill in the gaps like some people like to talk about on SPY. Uh, we could go right to the middle. Ultimately, in the week, nowhere. Uh, and it's going to be some pretty decent red. Uh, what I would be worried about, let me get this up here, weekly expected moves. Let's just see where SPY, that puts us at 523.89. Um, if you're short, you probably don't even like the idea that I'm drawing that out. <laughs> And I don't either. But that's, that's what we're working with. Hopefully not. That's that's all-time highs. Ha this is, no. I'd be okay with us getting back to where we started. That'd be a nice weekly dojo. Doji. Chris, did you comment on here earlier about the questions on Patreon? Because the answer is no. No, I did not. Patreon's alert system is is rough. Um, it, it really is no clue. Okay. There was, there was somebody else. Um, I don't say it's Chris and the profile picture. Very similar. Ask that. I was like, man, ask it on here. Cause I, I missed it. All right. Like we talked about earlier, drop down, hit a wick or sorry, hit a zone, pop back up. Not quite as far with tech though. Uh, which is promising. Cause I'm in SQQQ. Uh, again, at, at this point I was up. Uh, I want to say my average should be floating around somewhere right inside here. Do they steal my identity? <laughs> DV? Uh, no. No, it was it was a Chris. Wait, did I get tagged in here? Would have gone to the moon except some goofball put a lid on it. <laughs> it went to 1961. I put a the reason why I sold at nineteen twenty five was because I did put a sell order right there. Uh in my main account. You guys saw that. And I wanted to I I wanted to say it before any before it actually pulled back or shot up to the moon so you guys can make fun of me. Uh but before the market even closed, I had that sell order in. That's funny. Uh you waking Don Franch up tomorrow. <laughs> All right, tech, yeah, nothing. Hopefully you guys don't think I'm just being lazy going through this. That, that sometimes there just isn't much to, to break down, which is, could be a rant in itself. Gap down right back up. Uh, again, we're well within any parameters of any surprise. Uh, we talked about that being overbought yesterday. Now, it didn't really hit a wick, just kind of – or sorry, hit a wick. It did, I don't really have a zone there. It, I wouldn't even draw a speed bump zone there. There we go. Let's see. Can I get an amen? Uh, Spy and QQQ do look like they, they want to roll over and down. Lisa, I don't know if I have to say it a thousand times, but I will speak it into existence if somebody tells me the number. I need it to come down. <laughs> not next week, not next month. Now. Pronto. Who do I have to bribe to make this happen? Like I said, I will delete this zone if it's in my way one more time. Uh, but that being said, so we're in a bullish trend, and right now we have a rally and a base. So, not to jump all the way back up to this, we spend the rest of the week sideways, I would be bullish going into next week. That's not even a bull flag. That's a base, and the bears or the bulls just catch their breath, enjoying the scenery of the just slaughter they just did with the bears. The charts want price to go down, so at least they're on your side. <laughs> Hopefully. 
Uh, but that being said, yeah, there's a reason why I'm short, and it's just something like this. Let's get one solid red day in here, and I'll be talking about buying the dip uh, until this ultimately this giant bear flag plays out. Uh, and this goes for the S&P, the NASDAQ. They look very similar. The Russell's kind of on its own own story. But these have just been, I could pull these up side by side and say the exact same thing verbatim. Um, now, I'll be short trailing. Might be talking about buying the dip, but I might, if I'm in SQQQ, the beauty of this, uh, you know, there's a zone around here anyway. We hit that zone, I will still be trailing SQQQ. But when I buy the dip, I'll just buy TQQQ. And let them pan out, you know. Like if it, uh, if it bounces, the 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 cool thing about let's just pull up the Nasdaq. Let's say we jump down, and hit this zone. SQQQ will be will be up. Okay, uh, at that point, I'll have my stop probably back here. I'm sitting comfortable, feet on the desk. Okay, wake me when there's movement. But I buy the dip, and then it pops up just outside of the zone. So somewhere in this black area, my stop will be in the green on TQQQ. It'll be in the green on SQQQ. And we'll let it pan out. Uh, it won't be a bad position to be in. Um, that's, you know, if, if that happens. And I'm talking back here. Now, if we break this, I think that bear flag is playing out. You will see me. Well, first of all, if, in that scenario, that would obviously tag out and take profit. You'll watch me roll that right back into more SQQQ for a full send south. Uh, but the NASDAQ particularly, because the NASDAQ hit that correction territory, the NASDAQ usually does move a little bit more excitingly than the S&P um, if that's if I'm saying that right you know it, it, don't don't take this out of context for every 1% the S&P does a NASDAQ's doing too right it's that friend that just can't sit still uh, but the NASDAQ did hit that the full-blown pullback or correction territory where did we actually did we hit correction we were just shy of correction maybe we make a run for it and hit that 10% mark or eight and a half percent. So what I can see happening is even while the S and P sells off, because remember I thought the S and P was come down here. That's nine percent. If the S and P trails its way down there, the Nasdaq just might have enough upswings in there that we stay maybe a little bit lower. Maybe we hang out because it's just such a wild card with this AI stuff uh, and where people. It, it, it's kind of like that's the safe money right now is AI. Um. So, I don't know. You might, when this does, or if, let's just say if, if it does break down and head south, you guys might hear me talk a little bit more bearish about the S&P than I am the NASDAQ because of that. And I've said that all along, but just for anybody that's just now hopping on the train, uh, that's why. You know, uh, who in this chat thinks if the stock market corrects, Google, Tesla, Meta, Amazon, we could even tag Apple, which is at the very bottom in there. Uh, who thinks those guys aren't coming back ever or aren't going to be green again? Right? I would rather have my money in there than I would energy or any kind of oil that used to be or the shiny metals, any of the safe haven stuff. I think there's a lot of safe money moving into some of these giants because Microsoft's not going anywhere. You know, the SP can do whatever it wants. Microsoft, not going anywhere. Okay? How... How uncomfortable outside of trading, right? We're talking about just capital allocation. Let's say we get the uh, the Rona crash again, right? People are losing their minds. Are you really panic selling Microsoft? Who who's going to panic sell that? Or Nvidia? Good. I'm just waiting to buy more. Let the sellers do their thing. Full send. Uh, boom. You know. Um. Uh, All right, we got everything. The Russell, yeah, nowhere. Russell still kind of has that bear flag look. But the Russell just seems complacent. Might get some moves. Uh, I might even buy it down here at this zone. Do I have an alert there? I don't know if that'll be a futures play or... Or not. I don't I'm, I'm kind of, I've, to be clear, guys, I've probably made more than you guys have in years of working whatever W2 job you have in leveraged ETFs. So they're kind of easy for me to, to get back in. They don't make any sense compared to a futures contract. But uh, uh, that's where it comes 
back into play of what's more important, uh, the tax benefits I get on a futures contract, the the much cleaner leverage, much easier ways to manage or psychologically how easy is it to buy some shares of SQQQ or TQQQ. Uh, so I, I don't know. I can't even explain why I do it. It makes no sense to grab SQQQ, especially when I trade futures. Um, maybe it just moves slower. But anyway, when you see me jump into those, and when it comes down here, I just might grab a leveraged ETF. Uh, it's not IWM. It's like IWM. It's like grabbing a slice of pizza but putting the crushed red pepper on top. You know, it just gives you a little bit of a kick. Um, that's all. Options on the futures have same tax advantages as just futures. They they do, and I'm fully aware of that. And I don't know why. I'm not just 100% in futures. Why I have spy options and not ES options. Uh, just old stomping grounds, old habits, hard to break. Maybe. Well, you know why fix what isn't broken, kind of thing. Uh, just letting the group know. Oh yeah, I'm not clapping back by any means. Once Robin has them, we will, we will get on them. Robinhood adding futures is a is a game changer. I can't believe they're even talking about that. That's going to be amazing, absolutely amazing. All right, so that's going to do it for the. I guess we can go over hood real quick before we finish up the 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 plays in general, uh, the futures. That this will be a clip in the morning. Um, okay, hood jumped up. I did go over slightly in the in the in the beginning. Uh, before the market closed, I had a sell order at 1925 right here at the top of the zone. It just jumped up. I got the alert that it filled. That was my main account. As far as the growth account goes, we have shares. I don't even know what our average price is. We've sold a couple contracts against it. Uh, the last one we sold was an 18 strike. We collected, I think, $63 on it. So if we just let that go, we sold our shares at 1863. So it's a it's a great going to be a great trade. Um and the premium we collected on an eighteen dollar stock, sixty three dollars on eighteen bucks. Uh, I forgot all the other ones that we did. Uh, but anyway, jumped up, hit that zone. Well, jumped up, hit the expected move. Ultimately held that zone, holding right here. Uh, as far as the growth account goes, I'm going to take this profit and put it into Palantir. Um, what will make my decision on that will be. What, what kind of premium we can get for one more week? Like, like if we roll it from the 18 now to the 18 of next week, get a full week of at the money premium. Um, I think we'll I think we'll do that, especially because Palantir is still Palantir is still selling off. Let's bring that up. It, it, it's holding this zone. Not a strong look. There should have been buyers here. So I do think Palantir just might keel over and head south. Now Hood could do the same thing, but when we lock that 1800 dollars in. That's almost another 100 shares of Palantir. So Palantir sells off. I'm going to be excited. Uh, so right now, that is that is where I plan on putting the funds. I do think this is a pretty pretty good dip buy uh, as far as Palantir goes for uh, for the growth account. Um, so we'll see what kind of premium we collect uh, on the week on, on rolling that contract. Tomorrow, that contract is going to be down a lot, which is good for us because we sold it. For anybody that doesn't understand, uh, we sold the contract. So somebody paid us $63. Tomorrow, that thing's going to get absolutely smoked, uh, which means we're rocking and rolling. Uh, should be up around 80%. Um, so, we'll, again, we'll see how much we can roll it for. But that is where, unless a better idea comes up, uh, if it had to happen right now, funds will go to Palantir. Okay, thanks for this. Uh, my average on those, shout out to Technician. He does. He keeps track of it for me. Uh, he says, my average is 1610. Okay, so if I don't do anything and I let the shares go, and they're 1846 right now, I have a contract to sell them this Friday at $18, less the premium I collected on it. Uh, so we'll call the average 1610. We'll sell it at 1863. That's the overall trade for our hood endeavor. Uh, and we will take that and uh, full send. Okay, actually, you guys got to just get introduced to selling puts. What I think I'll end up doing, because I think I have a better idea, I think we'll end up letting them go, and then I will sell the 18 strike put, maybe the 1750. So I have the cash available. I'll, I'll allocate it towards Hood, um, 
will still collect a premium. And if I get the right dip buy or the right signal on Palantir, because Palantir might just turn and start headed up, and I'm not waiting forever for the $19 dip buy, uh, we'll close out that put, we'll take the cash, and, and we'll, we'll toss it right into Palantir. Um, so that's that's what we'll do. We will We will let it go, and then Monday we'll sell a put. So, boom. All right, that's going to wrap it up for that. See you guys in the next one.